All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time to come see my presentation today. So my name is Nadia Ali, and uh, my talk today is about diving into your passion, outlining my journey of breaking out from the corporate world to follow my passion, leveraging Facebook as a tool to create a brand and a business. So my goal today is to inspire only two people in this audience, just two. So if you, if you are inspired, please come tell me later. It'll make me feel a little bit better. OK, so a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Toronto, Ontario. Woo! Right? For, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Toronto is in a little country north of us called Canada. And I had an amazing childhood in Toronto. I was able to pursue a lot of different interests. One of those interests was photography. So when I was about eight years old, I got my first top side photography camera. When I was 14 years old, I got my first video camera, and that's when I started video editing. When I was 13, I was lucky enough to get my first scuba diving certification on a family holiday in Jamaica. So after this amazing childhood in Toronto, I moved over to, uh, sorry, British Columbia, also in Canada. And uh, in Vancouver is where I did my undergraduate degree in fine arts, and I did my graduate degree in digital media. And I can assure you the program looked nothing like this picture, but it sure felt like it. We were to be among some of the first people in the world to get their graduate degree in digital media. Think of it as a graduate degree, uh, an MBA, but in digital media. After uh, getting my degree, in, uh, I moved to the United States of America. I moved to Seattle, Washington, where I was, uh, <laughs> where I was lucky enough to get a job as a consultant with Microsoft. And it was in these two years at Microsoft that I really started to understand the use of social media for business purposes. It was also during this time I met the one and only Ted Murphy of Isaiah, and we actually ran some really powerful Twitter campaigns uh, through Puff Daddy. And I swear to you, Ted did not pay me to say that. So it was really during this time at Microsoft I, understand it, I started to understand more the power of content linked with the power of social media. OK, so here I am at Microsoft. And you know this is a job a lot of people dream of having. But for the first time in my life, I start really questioning my path. Because like some of us in this room, a lot of it's dictated for us. You know, We're going to grow up. We're going to go to high school. We're going to go maybe get a higher education. We're going to get a job. Maybe you're going to meet somebody, have kids, have a family, make a, have a house, buy a house, live a life, and then you're going to die. That's, that's seriously, that's what was going through my head. And I thought you know, to myself, I'm not really sure if this is what I want to do. Is this, I want to stay here and work 9 to 5 every day, have a few meetings during the day, go home, eat dinner, and repeat this five days a week. Is this what my life is going to be like? So this is when I started really questioning what it is I really want. Is this really what I want? And I, I knew that I wasn't really sure that I, want where I wanted to be where I was, but I didn't know where I wanted to go. I had no idea. So as uh, fate would have it, uh, fate intervened one day. I turned to my colleague at Microsoft and I said, hey, you know what? I found this amazing website last night. I found onlinevideocontest.com. And I'm noticing not a lot of people are entering it because it's a lot of work to enter an online video contest. Since you're so good at making videos and I'm so good at making videos, why don't we help each other and enter a whole bunch of contests? And he said, that sounds like a great idea. The deal, though, is that we're going to split the prize whoever wins, because we were going to help each other. So I said, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do that. So about three to four months later, I got a call from Tourism Fiji. And my video had won first place in their online video contest. Thank you. Little did I know that this contest would absolutely change my life. So. I ended up going to Fiji with my best friend, Hillary, who's in the audience here today. Thank you, Hillary. <laughs> and uh, I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. You said you were going to split the prize with your colleague, right? But my colleague's girlfriend would not let him go to Fiji. And come on, people, you can see why. 
Yes. And so uh, we went on this amazing trip to Fiji, all expenses paid, even flights, OK? And the trip was heavily focused on scuba diving. And I hadn't really gotten to scuba dive a lot because I was so much uh, focused on my education growing up. And I fell in love with scuba diving. It ignited this passion. I was so excited about this newfound world. I came back from Fiji, and I started doing what any normal human would do. I started Googling. So I started Googling best scuba diving destinations, where to see whale sharks, where to see hammerheads. And what I noticed was that there was a huge gap in the market, OK? The websites that I found, this is 2010, by the way, they looked like they had been made in the late 1990s, OK? They were foreign-based. They were text-based. They were ugly. And most important of all, the, value, the content on the websites were not valuable. They weren't valuable to me. I couldn't see and I couldn't learn from them. So a few days later, after this realization, my baby was born, scubadiverlife.com. <laughs> and we're in 2010 right now. So what I did is I obviously created the Facebook page right away along with the website. And the ad platforms on uh, Facebook was going strong, so I invested some of my personal money uh, working on like campaigns, bringing in divers from around the world, properly targeting them to come in and like my Facebook page, and then have a side strategy on content creation, the best I could do at the time to get them engaged with what I was trying to do. I knew what I wanted to do. I just needed to execute it. So this takes us back to now 2011. And uh, I had a very traumatic experience. And a lot of us in this room are going to experience this trauma at one point in our lives. I experienced my first encounter with death. This is Dave, and I've known Dave since I was 12 years old. And he died uh, four hours before his 28th birthday. And I had never, again, had someone close to me die, and it really woke me up. Those feelings I was having at Microsoft about my placement in life and what I wanted to do were just really at the surface now with Dave dying. I thought, you know, wow, life is short. You know, Life is very precious. If he can die four hours before his 28th birthday, he had no idea. What does that mean for you? So uh, shortly before um, Dave dying, I was actually at Google San Francisco. And I was giving a talk there on, uh, con on community growth. And I thought, this is such an amazing environment. Google is amazing. The offices are amazing. The people are amazing. This is where I want to be. I want to be at the forefront of technology. I want to be with these people who are a little bit closer to my age. This is the change I need. This is the change I want. I want to work at Google. This is it. So uh, a couple days after coming back from Google, I decided to be one of the 2 million people annually to put in their resume at a, for a job at Google. The very next day, I get a call from the recruiter at Google, and we start the interviewing process. My first in-person interview was two days after Dave died. So. I actually started that uh, process, and within 45 days, I had moved from Seattle, Washington, to Mountain View, California, and was a full-time employee with Google. So I entered Google with a very heavy heart, and I was very confused because I, I was all these emotions I was telling you about. I didn't know if this is the right move. Is this what I should be doing? And I was thinking about the ocean a lot. Um, and Google's a great company. But it wasn't really what I wanted to be doing. I really felt like the life that I wanted to live was on one side of a cement wall. And the life that I wanted to be living was on the other side of that cement wall. And I didn't know how to break through. There was too much fear, and there was too much anxiety. So within eight months of joining Google, I left Google. And I actually had another job lined up with a more relevant company that I thought was in the direction of where I wanted to go with my life. I had a couple months between uh, the two jobs, and I ended up going to a store, an underwater uh, photography store in California. And I took $15,000 of my hard-earned savings, and I walked up to the sales guy and I said, I want to be able to take photos underwater, and I want to be able to make uh, videos underwater. This is my website, and this is uh, my Facebook page. Help me out. You know, what, what, do, what do I do? Give me the equipment. And so he gives me all this equipment. He Actually, I get a pretty nice setup for 15000 
And then I'm about to walk up and I look at him with these 20 boxes of lenses and cameras. And I said, well, I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to connect the strobe to the housing. And then I put the camera in the housing and then what, what? And uh, he said, well, you're lucky. Because in a month from now, we're going to do an underwater photography workshop in Bon Air. And we'll cut you a deal. We'll give you 50% off. You come and cover the trip and, and tell your community and everything what you're doing. And we'll teach you how to take photos underwater. And I said, oh, that's great. I'm in. Let's do it. However, I didn't, you know, now we're kind of moving forward a little bit. I didn't have the courage to go out on my own yet with what I was building on the side. And so I ended up joining Patty. Now, Patty is the largest scuba diving certification company in the world. They certify over a million people a year. And I thought, this is it. This is amazing. They're ocean, I'm ocean. They're diving, I'm diving. I am never going to leave this job. In fact, I had said that my, to myself about Google and Microsoft, so it's kind of funny how you make these things up in your head. So Patty had hired me because they saw what a great job I was doing with Scuba Diver Life on the Facebook and on the website. They really wanted to put their foot into content creation and social media. And at this point, my Facebook page had more fans than them, a multi-million dollar company. And I was making a lot more content than them as well. So here I am, third time. That's three times deja vu, I guess. Uh, Third luck's the charm. I was still, you know, uh, sitting here at behind a desk, nine to five, five days a week. Yes, the interest of the, you know, the interest was of, of what I wanted. It was scuba diving, and that was there. But I wasn't in the ocean. I wasn't on trips. I wasn't hanging out with hammerheads. It wasn't what I wanted to do. And so at this point, my Facebook page was at 300,000 fans. But the, the, the whole idea and the execution I wanted wasn't there. I wanted to hire more writers. I wanted to really fine tune the content curation. I wanted to make great content. I wanted to be able to go and travel and capture the underwater world through photography and videos and show it to my growing community. I really, really wanted to make good content because it was not there for this industry. And then a number came to my head, 730. It's been 730 days of unhappiness. It's been over 730 days of suffocation. It's been over 730 days of not living a fulfilled life. So what did I do? I quit. <laughs> I quit. I had no job lined up. It was spontaneous. It wasn't planned. And I kind of felt like this guy right here. You know, when I'm in a situation like this, I think to myself, WTF. I know what, you, I know what you're thinking. You know what that means, right? Why the fear? Why the fear, Nadia? Why are you so afraid to go out on your own? You're building something on the side here. Why are you so you know, afraid? Obviously, these things like, how am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to take care of health care? You know, all these things that would come to someone's mind. And I had to remind myself, you know, I've built something here on the side. It's not nothing. I have over 300,000 fans on Facebook. I'm getting a lot of people to my website a month. And uh, I had to call my mom for some reassurance because you know what? That's what moms are for. So I called my mom and just said, Nadia, don't you forget that life is what you make it, and you are my daughter. You can do anything, OK? So, because travel was so important to me at the time, I ended up writing different operators. I said, you know, these are my numbers on Facebook. These are my numbers on the website. I'd love to come and cover your trip. And these are not cheap trips. You know, these are $5,000, $10,000 trips that uh, I would want to go on. And I was very successful in being able to exchange uh, reviews and content creation to get on these sorts of trips. So a few months after uh, I got this into my system, a little bit of travel, I was on Facebook. And I was scrolling through Facebook, and I saw this amazing free diving video. This video was something like no other. I thought, this is the most amazing underwater video I have ever seen in my life. And I saw my friend had shared it. And I called her up, and I said, I see that you, you're friends with this guy, Go, who's made this video. I want his number. Do you have his number? And she said, yeah, I was actually in Cayman Islands with him a few weeks ago. I said, OK, give me his number. OK, so I called this guy Go up, and I said, hey, Go, uh, my name's Nadia. This is Scuba Diver Life. This is my vision for Scuba Diver Life. I really want to focus on good content. Now, I have a trip planned to Mexico for 10 days. I want to take you on this trip. We're going to go to Cozumel, and we're going to scuba dive in Jacques Cousteau's favorite locations. Then we're going to go over to the mainland, and we're going to go into the cenotes, and we're going to go do some cenote diving. 
And the highlight of this trip is going to be that we're going to go and swim with four to 500 whale sharks off the coast of Isla Mujeres in Mexico. However, I cannot pay you for these four videos, but I'll give you the trip because I was able to make deals with the operators that we could get two people on the trip for free in exchange for the content. And I, ha I somehow convinced Go to come on this trip with me to make these four videos. So we had an amazing time in Mexico, and I ended up going a few months down the road to this conference called DEMA. Now, DEMA is the largest scuba diving conference of the year worldwide. This is a B2B conference. It's actually two weeks from uh, today in Orlando. And I walked into DEMA with uh, the videos downloading. Go had just finished them, and I'm downloading them. And I went to every single booth here at DEMA, and I went to and talked to every owner I could. I said, this is Scuba Diver Life. This is the Facebook page. This is the website traffic. And here are uh, these amazing videos. And I ended up walking away from DEMA with uh, several advertising contracts and several video contracts. Thank you. And now, suddenly, my business model was shaping. Okay. So what I decided to do was that, you know, I'm kind of new at this entrepreneurship thing. I'm going to set some goals so I can understand where I want to be and kind of set a vision for myself. So I said, you know, I want to have a million fans on Facebook by the end of 2013. I want to achieve 100,000 unique visitors a month. I want to add 25 retail outlets for the Scuba Diver Life apparel line. I want to launch an iPad magazine and increase revenue to $240,000. Okay? Now, for every entrepreneur, there's always going to be a lesson in success, and there are going to be several lessons in failure. So these are some shirts I designed. Scuba diving is such a passionate sport. If you know a diver, they're going to tell you tons of stories about the ocean and how amazing it is. And they're, they're really in love with the underwater world. And I thought, you know, the t-shirts and the apparel in the diving industry are so cheesy and so poorly made. And I knew if I could make some sexy stuff, like to me, scuba diving has got almost a James Bond appeal to it. So I thought, I'm going to make some really cool shirts that more people, I think, would wear and, and like. And I, I, on the first day, I had 160 sales, which is awesome, right? Except a lot of those sales were from outside of the United States, and I somehow created a job, a full-time job for somebody. I wasn't able to keep up with the demand, uh, with the influx of emails coming in, with people asking for tracking from, from Malaysia and Indonesia and Europe, uh, which wasn't even something I could provide for them. So this is just a really valuable lesson for me in time management and taking on too much. And just like I had hired Go to optimize my time for video creation, I was needing to do that for this, but I wasn't in the position to do so just yet. So, you know, at the end of 2013, I look at my goals, and I wasn't able to uh, get the 1 million fans on Facebook. I did achieve the 100,000 visitors a month. I closed down the retail line uh, shortly after, and I did uh, succeed with the last two points there. So now we're in 2014 and beyond, and uh, I've been very lucky to grow the company into, into where it kind of is today, really focusing on content creation and, and really the quality of that content. I've been able to work with several tourism boards uh, like Bermuda, Cayman Islands, Australia, Dominica. I've been able to work with them to make influential content, videos, and, and, and photos to help engage people to go dive their destinations, to show them why they're such great diving destinations. I've been lucky enough also to work with GoPro on some very unique GoPro videos underwater, which is just a dream for so many filmmakers. I've also been able to improve my underwater photography. And it's always such an honor when I get emails from people from around the world uh, congratulating me on the photos that I'm able to take and numerous publications uh, asking to license my images. And uh, now we're in July 2014. I finally hit the one million fans on Facebook, which was quite an accomplishment. Thank you. And funny, funny enough, um, a week later, uh, Facebook headquarters calls me up on the phone and invites me over to Menlo Park to a small business panel on small business and Facebook. So this was kind of like uh, a kid being at Disney World, except it was me at Facebook headquarters prancing around, just enjoying herself. I'm a huge Facebook fan, obviously. So uh, like any entrepreneur, you look for different revenue streams. And natural progression is, for me, expeditions. From now, I've been traveling the world for almost three years. I've been on some amazing, amazing expeditions. But I've also been on some very shady expeditions. 
And so I'm able to uh, leverage my social media presence, the brand authority and uh, things like that, to sell trips to people and they trust me because I've been on the road, they can see the content we're making, they can see we're on a trip and what we're, what we're making, and they know that we're gonna curate exp an experience for them and give them and be able to deliver on it. For instance, I take people now to Tonga. This is a picture I took this year of my friend Daniel here, actually. And uh, we take people to swim eye to eye with humpback whales. So if anyone in the audience is in, interested in doing that, come talk to me later. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. And there are just other hazards out there as well. Uh, my mom loves scrolling through lists. I'm sure lots of you look at lists online. And you can see here that uh, one day she's on this list, 22 unbelievable extreme selfies that are so awesome, they should win something. And uh, she's scrolling and she's scrolling and she gets to number 11 and it's me, her daughter. Why, 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 why? Get out of there, you crazy person. <laughs> Making your mom wish that you had a corporate job. That's my present for, uh, presentation for today, but I have a little video montage that I've put together showcasing the last few years that we've documented on the road. And I really want to showcase that content is queen. So enjoy. Hey everyone, this is Nadia with scubadiverlife.com. such a tough life. So I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but this is actually pink sand, which is a very cool feature of Bermuda. This is beautiful, <laughs> this is amazing.